In today's video, I'm going to be doing something really cool. I'm going to be comparing the two hottest smart telescopes in the market today. I have in my hands just here the Dwarf 2 telescope, and it's going to be going up against the Seastar S50 telescope by ZWO. They are both incredible in their own right. They're each available for less than $500, and they're capable of capturing our cosmos in tremendous detail, all from the comfort of our own houses using our mobile devices. But it's time to answer the question once and for all, which of these two is the best? I'm Damon Scotting, and this is Astronomical. The smart telescope market has grown significantly over the last few years, but the most important step was made last year when all of a sudden, smart telescopes became affordable. Forget this, the quality of the images and the ease of the observations has not dropped along with the price. In fact, they've only gone and got better. I'm going to show you the images I've captured with the Seastar and Dwarf telescopes. Then I'm going to compare these to the Unistellar EV Scope 2 in order to determine which is indeed the best. But before we begin, what even is a smart telescope? Typically, when imaging our night sky, we need a tracking mount for our telescopes to counteract the rotation of our planet. So once we have this and we've purchased ourselves a nice and capable camera, we then need to navigate our night sky and start snapping some pictures, before then going back inside to our computers and spending hours and hours stacking and processing the images. Now this is a nightmare, especially if you live somewhere where it's super cold outside. The beauty of the smart telescope revolution is that it removes a tremendous amount of all this hassle by creating these remote controlled, all-in-one astrophotography packages. Not only are they telescopes, they also have sophisticated tracking mounts that allow you to find and follow anything in the night sky that your heart desires. They also include built-in image sensors that capture photos and do all of the stacking process live before your very eyes. And we haven't even mentioned the cool bonus features they each have that make them all the more accessible. To put it simply, they are a game changer. And whether old-timey astrophotographers who are stuck in their ways like it or not, they're here to stay. Never before has astrophotography been as accessible for newbies and amateurs as it is today thanks to these smart telescopes. Whether that be through their ease of use or their unbelievably low price tags, the development of smart telescopes is the dawn of a new age of astrophotography. So first up, the Seastar S50. If you haven't heard of it before, prepare to have your mind blown. This is the Seastar S50 and it is the complete package. It's perfect for both beginner and advanced astrophotographers like myself and it only costs $499 and in today's video I'm going to be reviewing it. When using the app you're provided with a wide variety of suggested targets, including those that are best suited for imaging tonight. You can of course point it anywhere you wish. But in this instance, I have a very specific target in mind. If you want to learn more about what you are imaging, then they have included some very useful information about the object. You are then presented with a sky atlas, which means you can watch as the telescope slews to the intended target and precisely aligns itself. This generally takes a minute or two, but after it's centered the object, all you have to do is tap the red capture button and let the photons do their work as they reveal more and more detail about these wonderful deep sky objects. After 15 minutes total exposure time, this is what I managed to produce. The imaging process is unbelievably easy. I managed to capture an extravagant selection of DSOs, ranging from star clusters to nebulae to galaxies and even planets. The onboard 64GB storage ensures there is plenty of room for your raw images to be saved. Once imaging is complete, Preview photos are downloaded onto your phone. This is how the images turned out without any additional editing. The Smart Telescope overlays a very useful graphic that includes a timestamp, the name of the object, and the total exposure time. If you're like me, then you're going to want to bring out the best features in the image. The main adjustment I made was to sharpen the image, reduce the noise, and increase the contrast and saturation. The magnification is quite high, which means objects like the Andromeda Galaxy that I've captured here will require you to take multiple mosaic shots to include all of the galaxy itself. But how bloody special is that? This is a 17 minute exposure of the core of our nearest galactic neighbor. Amazing. The method in which the sea star captures the night sky is very impressive. It takes successive 10 second long exposures of the target and stacks them live in front of your eyes. And within the first minute or so, you can already make out some spectacular detail in your images that would otherwise be invisible to the naked eye. With 30 minutes total exposure time, we are able to create this.
Of all the smart telescopes, I have found the images produced by the Seastar S50 the easiest to edit in post. The Seastar has a whole host of features and functions that make it stand out amongst the rest. It includes a carry case, tripod, and clip-on solar filter, allowing you to also take images of the sun. To see what else it includes, I've attached a link to its official product page in the description below. But before reviewing the Seastar S50, I actually managed to get my hands on the even smaller and cheaper Dwarf 2 telescope. And it was upon using this that my eyes were open for the very first time to the wonders of a smart telescope. Perhaps the second best option you could choose from is this right here. It's a lot smaller than the Seastar in its total size, it's lighter, but it does fall short in terms of imaging capabilities. And there we go, zero to 700,000 stars in just under three minutes. This is the Dwarf 2 telescope. And in today's video, I'm gonna be showcasing what this tiny telescope is capable of. So the Dwarf 2 telescope is a lot smaller and to better describe it, cuter. I have managed to fit it in my trouser pocket before and I've previously compared it to a Nintendo Switch. Its unique design makes the most of its compact features and still allows it a magnified view of our universe. It has two lenses, one for wide angle photography, the other for more distant objects such as birds and, well, stars. It follows the same methods as a sea star in that it can find and track deep sky objects, it plate solves your image in order to precisely center it, and will stack your images live. Its smaller size does mean a smaller aperture and as a result, reduced light gathering capabilities in comparison to the Sea Star, but it does also still have a duo band pass filter, meaning it can capture great amounts of detail in a variety of objects, such as the Andromeda Galaxy. These are the raw stacked images from the Dwarf 2 telescope, all of which can collectively be captured in as much detail as this in less than six hours. This can all be done in one night. So that means every night you can be capturing a whole universe of wonders with your telescope. Galaxies, star clusters, nebulae, you name it, and your smart telescope will find it for you. I say three minutes just because that's a fairly conservative estimate of how long it will take you. But once you know what you're doing, you're not connecting a new device for the first time, it shouldn't take more than 90 seconds to get up and running. The setup time is roughly the same for the Seastar S50 and the Unistellar EV Scope 2. Speaking of which, it's now time to talk about our final smart telescope. And I've waited to the very end because for most of us getting into astrophotography, our budget is less than $500. This smart telescope, however, is $4,899. Ouch. With such a high price tag, you'd also expect it to come with significantly better features, and given the fact that every review out there for it has it pegged at being five or four stars, you'd hope for a much more sophisticated camera as well. But no, prepare to be whelmed. The features of the $4,899 EP Scope 2 are very similar to that of the Seastar and Dwarf 2 telescope, with the biggest difference being its much larger aperture. The battery life is better than the Seastar and Dwarf, but the 9kg weight is a significant increase. If you are concerned about the battery life, then it's worth noting that with each of the smaller telescopes, you do have the ability to just plug in a $20 power bank and immediately double your battery life. Rather than taking 10 to 30 second long exposures of our night sky, the EV Scope 2 seemed to limit itself to just 4 second long exposures. The big gimmick of the telescope is that it has attempted to bridge the gap between visual astronomy and astrophotography by including an eyepiece that shows the object you're looking at. I actually do think this part is very cool. For better or for worse, it has a digital display that shares the view on your phone, maximizing that authentic astronomy experience. Yeah. Look, actual visual astronomy can often be disappointing for newbies, because you see these glorious images of the likes of galaxies and nebulae that look exceptionally vibrant, then you look at them for a telescope, and they can just seem bland and grey. By displaying the enhanced vision image, as Unistellar likes to call it, stargazers themselves are getting an enhanced experience. Yes, it's not what you can see with your naked eye, but it is what you can see when taking multiple images. What you're seeing is really there, but our eyes aren't capable of picking it out by themselves in as much detail. They apply a helpful graphic by default of your image, which I do like, but one of my biggest gripes with telescope companies is when they use false advertising. Before the telescope arrived, I was on their website trying to gain an understanding of what wonders I'd be able to see with the help of this luxury telescope. I was gobsmacked to see this image of the Crab Nebula featured. I can't even get an image that good even when using my university's 16-inch me telescope. So imagine my surprise when this is the image I was able to capture with the telescope. You can make an argument for a lot of contributing factors to good or bad images in astrophotography. The most common justification is light pollution. 
but I've since tested this telescope in the clearest skies possible. And let me tell you, it didn't come anywhere near this. There are loads of telescope companies that of course also do this, but it seems to be no retribution in this case. They're not the only telescope company to have ever done this, but I just feel that at $5,000 a telescope, you can't be using false advertisement. I did call Unistellar out for this in my full review, but my concern hasn't been addressed and this image is still featured on the product page. I'm typically very skeptical of these types of things beforehand, but like I said, the reviews for it were phenomenal. I had very high hopes that this was going to be the real deal. If the likes of the Dwarf and ZWO's Sea Star Telescope were producing images like this for under $500, then surely this one has to be doing 10 times better. But no, it doesn't. It doesn't even have a duo band pass filter, meaning that it really struggles to bring out the nebulosity in most of its images, and overall it's largely disappointing given the price. So let's do some side by side comparisons then. I'll run through the specs, then do some images. When it comes to aperture, which means how much light is let in, the C star is more than twice the dwarf, and the EV scope is more than twice the C star. All of them have similar focal ratios between f4 to f4.9. The resolutions of the dwarf and EV scope too are 8 and 7.7 .7 megapixels respectively, whilst the C star is just 2 megapixels. But are the specs giving us the full picture? Let's see how they actually perform when I put them up against the Orion Nebula. Now remember when I said that the EV scope seemed to only shoot in 4 second exposures whilst the others could go as high as 30 seconds? In this particular case, that has worked to its advantage, as the core hasn't been overblown. In all three of these images, they have captured a total of 30 minutes worth of exposures for the Orion Nebula. This is how they look after undergoing the same amount of sharpening, noise reduction, and then each of their necessary amounts of colour correction. Moving on to another familiar favourite, the Pleiades. Here we can see immediately that the EV Scope 2's greater magnification restricts it from fitting the whole of the Seven Sisters within its image. Without a built-in mosaic feature, this puts us in a poor position going forward, as it restricts some of the bigger targets in our night sky from being imaged. The Dwarf 2 brings out a tremendous amount of dust and gas from this young star cluster, far more than the EV scope. Because the EV scope has crosshairs at the end of the telescope, all of its stars will have diffraction spikes. Depending on how aesthetically pleasing you find them, you might enjoy your images having these, but they are effectively imperfections. The C star just about manages to fit the entire star cluster in it, and it shows the most impressive amount of detail out of all of the images. That is a special image, which turns out to be just the tip of the iceberg. For me, what the Seastar S50 has shown itself to be capable of well exceeds any of the competition. If you told me that the Seastar S50 was $999, I would still buy it. The sheer convenience from it is enough to warrant that kind of cost. But the fact that it's just $499 and comes with a carry case, tripod and solar filter included, I just generally can't speak highly enough of it. I mean, if you look at the Unistellar EV Scope 2, they have a solar filter available for the telescope itself, but you have to buy it separately, and it's just priced at the most ridiculous amount. And if you are going to get this telescope and you want to get a solar filter, I advise you not to buy the official one from their webpage and just buy some solar filter paper for yourself and just make your own. There is absolutely zero reason for a white light solar filter to be this expensive. The Unistellar products were previously the benchmark for smart telescopes. They were luxury items inaccessible to amateur astrophotographers on even a respectable budget. Now, they've become a laughing stock. The main justification has always been, you're paying for the convenience. This is quick and easy to set up. Sure, you can get a far superior astrophotography setup for the same price, but you can set it up and dissemble it in three minutes. For the Seastar though, you will not find anything anywhere near its level of image quality and convenience for under $1200. Disagree with that statement? Then please leave a comment down below suggesting what your efficient and capable alternative to the Seastar would be. Okay, so final thoughts. If we're doing a direct comparison with price being considered, then I'd have to say that my favorite go-to telescope would be the Seastar S50 telescope. The images that you can capture with this blow the dwarf lab out of the water. I've inquired with ZWO as to whether or not they have any plans for a Seastar S100 or something similar perhaps, and they were delighted to receive such a question, but say that as of right now, there are currently no concrete plans to roll out an immediate successor, and their focus is on ensuring the Seastar S50 is back in stock, which it is now after an impressively successful Christmas period. I like the design of the Dwarf 2 telescope, is a wonderful gadget that also packs a punch. I'd highly recommend it. And the EV Scope 2 is perfect for astronomy outreach and bringing the universe closer to first time stargazers. But the Sea Star has them both and every other smart telescope beat 
as being the best all-in-one astrophotography package. For now, it's the king of smart telescopes, and boy oh boy is it going to take something incredibly special to knock it off its throne. So that's my recommendation at least. Uh, if you have a different opinion, please explain why in the comments below. And if you'd like to try these telescopes out for yourself, if you don't own them already, then I've attached links in the description below where you can buy them directly from their suppliers for as cheap as possible. Thanks for watching. I'm Damon Scotting, and this was Astronomical.